question. Good evening. A long time prior commitment prevents me from joining you tonight. Otherwise, nothing would have pleased me more than to participate in your annual Access to Justice event in person. From my perspective as Chief Judge, no issue is more fundamental to the mission of the courts than ensuring that the scales of justice are balanced for every one of our citizens and that the ideal of equal justice is also the reality in our courtrooms and courthouses. Today's biggest and most daunting challenge to achieving equal access to justice is the crisis in New York and around the country in the delivery of civil legal services to the poor and the indigent, the most vulnerable among us. This crisis comes at a time when state courts have become the emergency room for society's worst ailments, when families are unable to pay their mortgages or rent, when people default on credit card payments or child support obligations, when business deals go bad, when frustrations over household finances boil over into domestic violence, it all ends up as a matter on a court docket. But in the best economic times and in the worst, and especially in the worst, we are constitutionally bound to deliver justice and our doors must be open to all. But today, just as more and more people are struggling financially in funding, the funding for providers of civil legal services for the poor is being threatened. More and more people arrive in court without counsel to help them when the necessities of life are involved, like keeping the roof over one's head, assuring one's safety from domestic violence, fighting to receive public benefits to which one is entitled, defending against predatory lenders, keeping custody of one's children. We saw 2.3 million people appear without counsel last year, many of them in potentially life-altering cases. That's why the court system is addressing the problem of access to justice on all fronts. That includes our annual hearings to assess the unmet need for civil legal services so that we can propose to the legislature, as requested in a joint resolution issued last year, the level of resources required to meet that need. It includes our efforts to increase pro bono legal services, the latest initiative in this area being our Attorney Emeritus Program designed for senior attorneys to work with legal service provider organizations. And it includes a wide array of programs to help those who must appear without counsel, such as help centers, forms, do-it-yourself document preparation, and lawyer for a day programs, to name just a few. And we are always looking for new ideas and approaches. The New York Center for Law and Justice is well aware of the crisis in New York City regarding the poor who are struggling to gain access to justice and focusing your efforts on the indigent deaf community and developing a network of pro bono attorneys and affiliated organizations with New York Lawyers for the Public Interest, among other organizations. In so doing, the center has exhibited the kind of commitment, collaboration, and creativity that is essential if we as attorneys and judges are to meet our fundamental constitutional and ethical mission to see that every citizen of our state receives equal justice. I am deeply honored that you have chosen to confer your Access to Justice Award upon me. Since you are holding tonight's event at the Congregation B'nai Jishurum, I could not help ending with a few words from the Torah and its supreme emphasis on the equitable application, administration, and enforcement of the law, especially its admonition that justice, justice shall you pursue for rich and poor, high and low alike. The pursuit of justice is what I try to do 
each and every day and what all of you have dedicated your lives to doing. I salute the New York Center for Law and Justice for your dedication and for all your good deeds. Thank you.